This is a Trader Joe's pizza dough with red onion, tomato, and basil with a garlic butter sauce, finished with an aioli drizzle on top. We're also going to make a gluten-free version with TJ's cauliflower crust. The aioli sauce really takes it over the top. Did you know that October is National Pizza Month? Well, that's what we're doing today. We're making pizza just for that occasion. All right, so I'm going to be making two types of pizzas here. Both are going to be uh, semi-homemade, meaning we're going to buy our crust from Trader Joe's because they have a really nice, uh, nice fresh dough here, like you see here. This is just incredibly inexpensive. It's a dollar forty-nine for a pound of dough. I, I couldn't believe how cheap it was, and uh, it just it cooks up great. It's got a lot of good flavor. I think you'll like it. And we're also going to be using Trader Joe's cauliflower uh, pizza crust. So I'm going to show you how to make each crust. We're going to be using the same ingredients for both, but you can make it either way you want, depending on your preference, right? I'm going to show you the tips on, especially with cauliflower pizza crust. Sometimes it gets a little soggy, a little soft. So I'm going to show you some tips on how to, you know, crisp it up a little bit better and make it a better pizza. So I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm going to show you how to do it right after my chef joke. All right, so here's chef joke number one. Number two will be a little later. How do you fix a broken pizza? With tomato paste. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is mix together our olive oil and butter garlic sauce. So what I'm doing here is I'm mixing up some fresh garlic. So cut off the ends and then smash the garlic and the peel should come right off. Slice up your garlic and then chop it until it's very fine. Next, I'm going to melt a couple of tablespoons of butter in a little dish. Then I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of that minced garlic to the melted butter. And then I'm going to add an equal amount of olive oil as I did the butter. Give that a good stir and then set it aside. Now we're going to make our aioli sauce and I'm going to use some avocado mayo here by Primal Kitchen. We'll place that in a bowl, and don't forget you can get the written recipe below the video in the description area. And to that, we're going to add some Dijon mustard. I'm not being real precise here, but about a tablespoon. That fresh garlic we minced up is also going in this, along with a pinch of salt, fresh lemon juice, and a few cracks of pepper. Give it a good whisk to combine, and we'll pour it into a squeeze bottle because I like how it comes out nice and easy. Now we're going to work on Trader Joe's pizza dough. Now remember, this one is not gluten-free. Now you're going to want to preheat your oven to 475 degrees. That's according to the package. And because the dough is going to be a bit sticky, you're going to want to take some regular flour and place it, you know, just some down on the board and spread it out so that you can help shape the dough without it sticking. You can form the dough in any shape that you want, but since my pan is a rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and make mine more like a rectangular shape. So just keep working the dough until you get it thin enough. I'm just pressing it out until it's thin enough so that it's, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch thick, possibly, and maybe less, depending on how thick you like your dough. So here's how thin I got my dough. Now before we place the dough in the pan, we're going to want to grease the pan just a little bit with some olive oil here. So I'm going to pour some in and then just spread it out with my hand, or you can use a brush, whatever you want. And this is going to help keep that pizza from sticking to the pan. So carefully place your dough into the pan, and then you're going to have to spread it out again because it's going to, going to shrink up a little bit as you transferred it over. Now we're going to talk about our toppings. Now, of course, you can put any toppings you like on this pizza, but I would love for you to try what I've got here today and then let me know what you think, and you can always change it up. So I've got some shredded mozzarella and some burrata here, which is a fresh mozzarella cheese filled with mozzarella cream. It is so good. I'm going to be slicing up some red onion, and I'm going to do it very thin because, well, who likes really thick chunks of onion on their pizza? So go really thin with this. I think you'll enjoy it better. Just get it nice and fine, and then cut it a couple of times so the pieces aren't too big. And now I'm going to do the same thing with a big, juicy, ripe tomato. So now we're ready to start building our pizza. So we're going to want to take that butter, olive oil, garlic sauce and give it a stir. Make sure it's well mixed. And then we're going to take a pastry brush and brush it lightly over the dough. And make sure you get all the way to the edges because we want that garlic flavor everywhere. Now we can start laying on the goods. So we'll start with our mozzarella cheese. Now I like to go with a fairly thin layer here. We don't need to pile it on super thick. Next, I'm sprinkling on some grated Parmesan cheese. Here's a layer of that red onion and that juicy tomato. 
We have some fresh basil going on here, but we're not putting that on until it comes out of the oven. I'm putting a little more mozzarella on top, as you can see. And now I'm taking that burrata and I'm pulling it apart and placing it in little dollops all over the pizza. Then we'll finish it off with one last sprinkle of Parmesan cheese and then in the oven it goes. The package on the pizza dough says it should take about 12 minutes to cook, but I ended up cooking mine about 14 minutes, so just play it by ear. This is what you want to see, a nice golden brown crust. The cheese is browned a bit and it's bubbling all over the place. Now is the time we're going to add that fresh basil, because if you add it too soon, it tends to turn black and oxidize. So pull off your petals right at the end and then just roll those leaves, chop them up, and sprinkle it on. It gives it such a nice fresh flavor. It's great. This pizza turned out so delicious that my son ate the whole thing, no problem. If you think you might make this recipe, let me know by hitting the like button. And don't forget to finish this off with that drizzle of the aioli sauce. You're going to love this. It is so good. All right, it must be time for chef joke number two. What did the pizza say to the delivery guy? You don't pepperoni me. And as an added bonus, what did the delivery guy say in response? Hey now, don't get saucy. <laughs> now it's time for our cauliflower crust pizza. Now sometimes cauliflower pizza crusts are a little bit soggy, right? So what we want to do here today is I'm going to show you how to crisp it up just a little bit. So we're going to grease up the pan like we did the other pizza by adding just a light coat of olive oil. We're going to place the crust right down on the pan and then we're going to coat the crust lightly with the olive oil and butter garlic sauce. And now this is going to help the crust get a little bit crispy, right? That's what we want and it's to hold together. So this is going to go into the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about five minutes. Keep an eye on it. When it's done, we're going to top it just the same as the other pizza. Start off with a little mozzarella. Sprinkle on some Parmesan cheese. Layer on those red onions and those juicy tomatoes. Another little sprinkle of mozzarella cheese and and some dollops of burrata. I finished it off with a little more Parmesan cheese and then I popped it back in the oven. After eight minutes, this is how it looked when it came out. Time for basil. Slide the pizza over onto your cutting board and cut it up. This is a perfect pizza for one. And let me know down in the comments which pizza you're going to make. And don't forget that drizzle of the aioli sauce. If you love pizza, you might want to try my chocolate chip cookie pizza. It's soft, chewy, and delicious. Click the link on the screen and it'll take you right to the recipe. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, you can let me know by either pushing the like button, smashing it, or whatever you want to do. That always lets me know. And leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. All right, we'll see you back here next week for another rockin' recipe.